Aloha, welcome to Healing Oasis. I'm Reverend Dr. Glenn Swartout, and I'd like to invite you to a new course that's uh, just gone live on Udemy, the world's largest educational provider online. Uh, the course is called Natural Vision Improvement, and it's level 101. It's the, the basic course. The focus, we can say the central focus of this course, is on the flip side of central vision. It's on peripheral vision. Now why would we start with vision, natural vision improvement by exercising, expanding our peripheral vision? Well, this is the ground. This is the, the fullness of our visual space, which is the, the database from which we move and from which we move our eyes to see and look and discern and, and, and uh, focus on particulars, on specific objects. When we look at figure, we, we organize the information about that figure, we extract the meaning in that figure against the ground, the background, the context. So we're generating the context for vision improvement by first expanding, increasing the awareness, increasing the health and the performance of the peripheral vision, increasing the integration of the peripheral vision with all of our functions as a soul, because vision is an experience of the soul. It's not a function. Vision is not a function of the body. The body can be alive or dead. And the body by itself has no vision. When the soul is in its spirit body, inside the living biological body, that's when we have biological vision. And that combination of factors allows us to train that vision, to learn that vision, to improve that vision. So that's what we focus on in Natural Vision Improvement 101, expanding peripheral vision. The, the background, the, 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 <clears throat> the, the ground of this course is a theory, <clears throat> a theory I've developed called the clinical theory of everything. Sounds large. It, it is because it, it covers all of the experiences that we have in life when we deal with health and healing and disease and, and transformations, uh, birth and death. Uh, and life after death and out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences. Uh, there's a lot of data to be taken into account in a complete model that fall outside of conventional models and, and they're just we don't talk about that. We, that's ignored. That's a big question but it's too big we don't know the answer so we're gonna assume that it has no relevance even though it's the context of everything we think and do and experience. So we're taking a different approach. We're looking at the context first. Start with the big question, start with the big picture, and then we begin to fill in the details and see where everything fits in relation to everything else. Creates a much more integrated whole, much more integrated concept of what it is that we're intending to do when we intend to improve vision. So Integrated in this model are various worldviews, various historical and ancient, tr proven, tried and true uh, medicinal medical views, such as the, uh, the uh, Chinese medicine view that comes from Taoism, from the, the, the ancient yin-yang duality pers perspective, which grew into a, an even deeper understanding of, of a of a fivefold nature, uh, which has been seen in many cultures, but the five elements of traditional Chinese medicine or Oriental Oriental medicine uh, is a very interesting one, and it, and it, it's and it's proven out in in modern studies on the acupuncture meridians, where we, we now know that those are direct current uh, vessels. They're not not wires that are insulated and separate, but they are. They are uh, vessels that carry charge like a wire, but without the complete insulation, so that they are in relation to each other and become a, a kind of quantum computer uh, in that the, these 
areas when they become integrated and healthy and, and uh, at their, their peak function, the body becomes uh, a coherent state. And that's our goal. That's the goal of vision, is to integrate all of the other senses in the human being. Vision is responsible for about 90% of what we learn. It's two-thirds of all the bits of data, all the nerve current, the electricity coming into the brain at any given time in the waking world is our two eyes, and everything else is equivalent to one more eye. So uh, by integrating the peripheral vision, we create this, this field, this ground, in which we can develop other visual skills like focusing and eye movement and eye teaming and depth stereoscopic depth perception, tracking of moving objects and eye hand coordination and vision balance integration. All of these depend ultimately on our spatial awareness. We can we can be blind and, and need a cane or a seeing eye dog because we lose that periphery, even though we may have 20-20 visual acuity central vision. So very, very important function of peripheral vision, which we tend to take for granted, like fish take water for granted. We live in that space. It's the ground of our, our experience, is our, our vision, the space, the visual space in which we live. And that's true on the outside. It's also true on the inside. Visualization on a higher order of, of information processing of consciousness we'll get to in, introduce in the course of this, uh, of this course, of this work. And, and we'll get to it at much higher levels as we progress into later courses. As we bring in the other movement systems, the cognitive systems, the, the integration with the transpersonal, the transdimensional aspects of vision. Ultimately, vision and light is transdimensional. We know that a photon of light, uh, when it travels from one part of the universe to another, it experiences no time. It's timeless. We know that photons can just as easily travel forward and back in time with, with no distinction, no, no difference between the two, where other matter particles, other types of presence of, of universal energy, we have essentially the electron and the proton as the, the uh, the icons of those those types of matter. Uh, the when they travel in reverse time, they become antimatter. It's the same particle, but with reverse spin, and they have uh, a, a polarity that balances each other. Where light has the perfect balance of the, the it's it's not there's no mass. The fundamentals of the model have come out of traditional Chinese medicine uh, with its understanding of the five elements and the related meridians, which are electrical conductive vessels within the tissues of the body. Uh, these function like, like the blood vessels function uh, in, in pairs of arteries and veins. The, the meridians may function in pairs of coordinated uh, electrical conductive vessels that carry electrical charge in the plasma, the, the ionized fluids of the body, just like the blood plasma or the cytoplasm of the cells. When we look in the cosmos, we have plasma accounting for most of the matter in the universe. And that's an electrically conductive medium. And we see Birkeland currents, again, twisted pairs of currents just as in the blood vessels or in the meridians, as above, so below, this function. And that's why plasma as a state of matter in physics is named after the plasma in biological systems. They have similar shapes and functions. In fact, they're all uh, essentially fungal in, in form and shape. Uh, and that's our, our history, our ancestry, is we are essentially fungi. Fungi are the intelligence of the plant kingdom that that determines where the nutrients go to feed a particular tree or if there's not enough to go around which trees are going to be fed and which ones have to decompose. Uh, and, and it's the shape of our neurons, the shape of the blood vessels. If we look in the cosmos, we see that the dark matter has the exact same fractal shape as the neurons in our brain. Again, the same shape that we see in fungi that are part of our symbiotic uh, information base on which the the body is organized and structured 
So, so we see the Oriental medicine carrying this electrical view, electrical understanding of the meridians, and uh, we see uh, and the five elements. And we see in in Ayurveda, we see light as the fundamental awareness, the photon, a, a, a different f fundamental view within the quintessence, the five elements of modern physics and there's, there's ancient metaphysics also had, had five elements and, and there's they're parallel. We have different names and different understandings for them, different imagery that we associate uh, and different tools in which to, to see them. But we have essentially dark matter, dark energy, matter, electricity, and light. So light is, is the balance, is the one that is the crossover, the carryover between the forward and reverse time. It goes both directions. It's the ultimate, it's the ultimate uh, spiral, the ultimate vortex is, is the light, because it's the smallest, it can go the fastest. Uh, so, and because it has no, no mass, uh, it can go in either, either direction. Uh, elect an electron is, is fundamentally uh, a photon that's wrapped on itself in a Mobius strip with one twist and creates that field, creates that, that even the mass of the electron is created from that one photon. Uh, there's research now that, that shows that light can have mass and it's put between two very close parallel mirrors. The, the light is trapped in that space, goes back and forth, it resonates in that cavity, and, and, and it gains mass, just like an electron gains mass from light being uh, reflected or, or turned upon itself in a loop. So, so in any case, the Ayurveda sees the chakras, these, these luminous energy, energy centers, with the heart as the central core, core means heart, and, and then layers upon that of the other chakras and, and ultimately energized and integrated by the heart center at, at the core. Uh, so it's the largest electromagnetic field of the body is the heart. And in Oriental medicine, it's the, the integrator. It's the one that, that pulls all the other energies and emotion, emotions, like the, the dark energy of emotion that we can't see with a material instrumentation, but we can see with the instrument of the soul. We experience it. There's recent studies, very interesting, where people uh, described and drew drew the uh, location of energy in different emotional states in the body, and very consistent observations. Again, we can't we can't take a picture of it, but we can we can experience it with the mind. We can then communicate that and so we can observe that yes there are these patterns uh, and it's love and gratitude and joy and heart-centered emotions positive emotions of the heart that are the integrators that allow the energy to flow throughout the body in a coherent way coherent state uh, like the work that's being done with heart math institute and and biofeedback on on uh, heart rhythm and heart coherence coherence between the heart and the brain, for example. So the when we create this state of coherence by allowing ourselves to relax, going into a, a balanced autonomic state where the parasympathetic can be active. If we're out of balance, we go into sympathetic dominance and the parasympathetic is shut down. We can't digest, we can't relax, we can't allow circulation to our organs, we can't uh, heal. We can't sleep. Uh, we, we live in a culture that's dominated by stimulus, stimulation, uh, from stimulants like caffeine and theobromine and chocolate and matine and you name it, uh, to the, the kind of light energy that we live in, which tends to be, the engineers came up with that we need warm, warm white light because the eye is most sensitive to yellow. It's our peak sensitivity. So, in, from an engineering perspective, it was most, most uh, convenient, most efficient to illuminate our indoor spaces with primarily, dominantly yellow light. But that turns out to be uh, 
what we call infra green. It's, it's longer wavelength than the center of the spectrum, the green, which is the balance point. Like a green environment is a balanced environment for us to live in. It's where there's green foods, which is what should dominate our, our, our diet. Uh, and so in those warm color environments, it stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. There's studies at UCLA where they, they did just pure slides of pure color and the warm colors activated the, the sympathetic nervous system. Again, that's overactivated, overamped in our culture anyway. Sugar, and oh, just all the things that, that we do, stress and time pressure and go, go, go and multitasking electromagnetic fields that are operated on 50 and 60 hertz that are stress frequencies there's, there's many 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 solutions that we can implement for all these factors and we need to solve all of them ultimately but but first we have to have a model that that incorporates the big picture right we need the peripheral vision the awareness in order to see how everything is connect, interconnected and how to unplug from the stress and how to begin to plug into a whole other way of operating, different way of being, different way of seeing. And that's what we're talking about in natural vision improvement, starting with the breath, which is also the peripheral vision, taking in the light, the energy, the oxygen, the spirit minerals that are in the air that we breathe in according to oriental medicine, breathing in that spirit and building our spirit body, the vessel, the holy grail that holds the consciousness, the dark, the dark matter that holds the dark energy of consciousness. Why are they dark? They're inscrutable to material-based instrumentation. There's, there's means, there's, there's material-based means for alchemy where we can concentrate the spirit minerals and, and it's observed by the alchemists working with these that they are the vessel of spirit. It's said that the uh, you know the the ultimate goal of of alchemy uh, is is actually a mutual uh, a mutual evolution of the alchemist and and the spirit mineral itself. You know the the, the holy grail of alchemy is not to change a base metal like lead into a more precious base metal like metallic gold, but to create spiritual gold, which is very different. It's a white powder or it's annealed into a glass which becomes the book of the law that Moses receives on the mountain and is now in Ethiopia and if you're in its presence you begin to see with the ultimate peripheral vision of future and past as well as, as uh, a breadth and depth of, of spatial awareness in the here and now uh, of seeing ourselves as the divine sees us, seeing, seeing our gifts in balance with our challenges because they always come together. These are flip sides of the same coin that we are given. You know, the talents that we're given in life come from the challenges that we have received and have met, have overcome to develop those gifts. So I, again, invite you to join me in Natural Vision Improvement. Uh, it's the beginning. Please uh, join now while we have uh, an opportunity to offer uh, to get this started at, at a, a very, very uh, uh, attractive uh, price. Uh, and uh, if you can't afford it, contact me and, and we'll get you in for free.